Hey everybody, welcome back. So in a previous video, uh, I introduced you guys to a web-based graphical tool called Webmin. Uh, it's a really nice way to get started as a Unix or a Linux admin when you haven't completely memorized the command line yet, right? Great little tool. But you don't want to expose a web-based interface to the internet at large. That seems like a really scary, dangerous idea. So one thing you could go ahead and do is you could go expose that on the IP address for a local machine and then VPN in, which is, which is great. Um, but that's not always something you can, you can go do. VPN may not be something that's you know, enabled in your particular environment or, um, you know, maybe kind of overkill for the solution. So what I wanted to go do is show a different way of accessing Webmin uh, that's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. If I kind of zoom in here, I'm not sure why that's not letting me zoom in. Uh, but if we try to control, well, all right. Well, <laughs> we'll look at, we'll, we'll say that this is zoomed in. Uh, so we basically what we do is we have a person on a machine, right? Uh, and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to connect to a remote host, right? So we're going to go connect in this case to 1.2.3.4. Right? This is just the IP address of your remote Linux machine that you want to go manage, right? So you're on your, your laptop or your desktop and you want to go connect to this machine. Maybe it's an Amazon instance, maybe it's hosted, whatever it is, right? It could be at home. You want to go ahead and connect to that. So uh, what we do is we set up Webmin uh, to run on localhost only. So instead of all of the IP addresses, we have it listed on localhost. So uh, if you're not aware, uh, localhost is the, uh, the local IP address of the machine. So it's not the external network it's internal to the machine. So it's only uh, able to be accessed on that particular host. So what we're going to go do is we're going to go connect to 1.2.3.4, right? Which is the, the public IP address of this host. And then we're going to go ahead and connect uh, Webmin running locally on this machine, right? On 127.0.0.1 colon 10,000. So port 10,000 on localhost. So the... Port 10,000 if it is its default port. You can go change it if you want to. And then what we're going to go do is we're going to go use SSH tunneling to allow us to go ahead and have on our own local host 127.0.0.1 colon 10,000 forward uh, all packets that it receives over this SSH tunnel, which is private and encrypted, uh, to local host on the remote machine. We're basically creating a little internal route uh, on our, our system. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and in turn forward all the packets back uh, over to port 10,000. So this is a fairly interesting thing to go do. So let's go take a look at this real quick. So what I have uh, already set up is a, uh, a Linux machine. Uh, clear this out. And again, this is, this is a bit small. So actually, let me jump on, on SSH. Uh, and putty real quick. So pull this up over here. Same host uh, that I have in my my little uh, uh, ESX kind of host running over here. So hopefully this should be visible for you guys. Let me go ahead and make the, the font size even a little bit bigger because uh, that looks like it might be a little bit small. So it changes from 20 to 24. Hopefully that'll be a little bit bigger. All right. So the idea here is I've got netstat dash NTLP. So we'll get the numeric TCP listening uh, in the programs. So uh, we're going to go ahead and have a couple different things running. We get SSH running, of course, uh, on the standard port 22. Uh, I've got uh, Webmin running over here uh, on port 10,000. Uh, and then I also have Squid, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Right. So we've got this uh, over here. So I can go ahead and do an IP uh, dash A, ETH, uh, ETH zero. IP A, not dash A, ETH zero. Uh, that's supposed to do that. Well, I'm not sure why I didn't give it that before. Um, so we have uh, basically our IP addresses here. It's got a bunch of virtualization stuff. Uh, so the one that we care about here is uh, 192.168.1.108, right? So that's that's basically the IP address of this machine. And if I go to another VM, 
go over to my um, TrueOS box over here. Uh, and let's just go verify that we can go uh, connect to this guy. So let's try to go and maximize this. And exit. And actually, we should do this in a Mate. So let's go ahead and make sure that we can go ping 22.168.1.108, which we are able to go do so that we got connectivity. And I can SSH 192 to 168.1.108. So yes, log in here, their password, and, and everything is, is good to go. So, so we can go ahead and stat. So we can go ahead and see that in fact that this is listening, right? So the same host, everything's everything's good. So if I go ahead and pull this uh, down here, so we can get to a web browser, this will move. Put on my web browser real quick, and I go to HTTPS. Cone slash slash one ninety two to one sixty eight dot one dot one oh eight colon ten thousand. That's not going to work, right? So can't get there. It's going to go spin its wheels for a couple seconds. It can say no, I can't. I can't get there. So what I can go ahead and do is I can do SSH dash capital L 127. Actually, 3.0.1 colon 10,000. And that's actually one to one away. So you can see here that I did SSH dash L forwarding the local port 10,000 uh, to 127.0.0.1 on this remote machine, right? So very, very simple, nothing crazy there. And now what I can go ahead and do is instead of going to 192.168.1.108, I can go to localhost 127.0.0.1. And it's going to say, hey, your connection's not secure, but it's allowing us to go continue. Uh, I can add an exception, confirm the security exception, and now I can get to Webin. And that's kind of it. So it's a pretty neat little thing to, to be able to go ahead and do. Uh, it works really well. Um, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, another thing I could potentially go ahead and do is, and if you're you know, looking at how to go set up Webmin to listen on localhost, you can just go to uh, the Webmin section when you first go install it, uh, and then you go to, ba -ba -ba, where is it? Webmin configuration, and then you basically just go to ports and addresses, uh, and then you basically change this from its default, which is any, uh, to only, and then 127.0.0.1. So very, very simple there. So uh, that works well. And then another cool thing that you guys might decide that you want to go do at some point is, uh, let's say that you are at a coffee shop or something like that. And for whatever reason, you don't have a, a VPN that's easily available, right? What we can go do is we can do a similar thing where we go on your, uh, your local machine and we set up an SSH tunnel to a system that has Squid installed. So Squid is a web proxy. Um, and I'm not going to go through the, the whole Squid configuration, but it's, it's pretty simple. And in fact, if you get Webin, you can go configure Squid through there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but basically what you do is you do a very similar thing. You have Squid listen on localhost. So normally you wouldn't want to install a, uh, a proxy uh, on you know, a system, but if it's only listening on localhost, that's not actually super dangerous. And what we're going to go do is we're going to go ahead and do the same kind of tunneling, but we're going to go ahead and configure it to point our web browser to Squid. So we can actually go ahead and use that as a proxy for all of our web connections. So let me go ahead and basically log out of here. 
I change the default squid port. For, I think it's 3160, something like that. Uh, I always change it to 8080. Um, and obviously if you're having something that's already listening on 8080, don't do that. Uh, but I change it to 8080 because it's easy to remember. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm doing the exact same thing as I did before. So now I'm forwarding the local ports 8080 uh, to 8080 on the remote machine. So here, if I then go into my configuration for Firefox, uh, I go to my preferences. Uh, one of the things we can go ahead and look for is proxy. Right? So if we go to the network proxy settings, I can go ahead and say manually configure this so that we're going to go ahead and have this point to 127.0.0.1. If I can port 8080. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing for SSL. 8080. Whoops. 8080, if I can type. And you can even do the same thing for SOX proxy because uh, Squid is a valid SOX proxy. And I can go ahead and say 127.0.0.1, 8080. And basically be good to go. So now if I go up here uh, and I open up a new tab and I say uh, DuckDuckGo, it's connecting through the Squid proxy. It's actually not going out uh, directly uh, to the internet. It's going through that other system. And if you were somewhere like a, you know, um, coffee shop where they have, you know, unencrypted Wi-Fi, um, if you're somewhere that you're a little bit concerned about, you know, uh, people snooping and things like that, uh, you can go set up your proxy settings uh, for your other applications that use, you know, that can do SOCs uh, to basically forward everything through there. Now, it's probably nicer to have a, a VPN uh, if you're going to be doing this kind of thing regularly. But in a pinch, um, that's kind of a, a neat way to go do it. Additionally, one of the things you can go ahead and do is you can go set this up so that SSH listens on port 443. Uh, and if you're in a coffee shop, sometimes they will block VPN access because people will use the VPN to get around their media restrictions and things like that. Uh, but you could go ahead and use port 443 connect to that via SSH and you know, it's all encrypted. So it looks like basically just standard HTTPS traffic. Uh, and then you could go ahead and do uh, your uh, encrypted traffic through that. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't know how often the, the squid stuff will be useful for you. Um, but I've had, you know, tons of occasions where I've had some kind of management interface that that's running in a, in a web browser. That's, that's um, you know, something we don't want to go exposed to the world. Uh, and having the ability to go ahead and do SSH uh, port forwarding uh, can be really, really useful. If you go look at the, the man page for this, uh, there's a whole bunch of different options on how to go set this up. You can go ahead and, and forward your local ports remotely um, as opposed to forwarding remote ports locally. So you can, you can switch the sort of direction that these, these tunnels go. Uh, and you can also go ahead and use this not just on the Linux side of the world, uh, but you can go ahead and use this with things like PuTTY as well. If we go open up a, a new PuTTY section, uh, and again, this is probably a little bit small, but if we go down here to SSH, uh, open up the uh, kind of section, there's a tunnel section down here, and we can go ahead and do, you know, port forwarding through PuTTY as well. So if you're if you're on a Windows machine, um, you you still have the option to go use uh, SSH tunnels. So uh, if this was useful to you guys, if you liked the idea of playing around with SSH tunnels, if you think this is something that you guys might use in the future. Uh, do me a favor and click the like button uh, down below so that people can see this video and that you know, they realize that there's some good content on here that might be useful to them as well. And if you like this kind of video, um, click the subscribe button because I'm going to make more of them. And uh, you don't get to watch them if you don't subscribe. I mean, you could like manually go there every single time, but it's probably not very efficient. So just click the button. Much easier. Very simple. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.